this video where I'm going to be doing some mono printing and I'm going to be using water soluble materials. I have some Stabilo. Um, I'm only going to be using the black one out of this today. We're working in black and white. And I have, oops, watercolor pencil. If you hear that noise, that's just my dog walking around on our hardwood floors. I'm going to be trying out several different papers with this technique. Um, regular copy paper. Right. Going to be trying some marker paper. Various types of marker paper. Some tracing paper. Okay, so what I am using, I don't have a jelly plate. I'm going to smooth that out. Is that too much light on that? I think so. Okay, so I don't have um, a jelly plate. So I actually have these plastic bags that I bought um, to put artworks in that have been matted and to sell. And I thought they were a good size and I could slip my line work under here that I wanted to trace on top. So, for this first one, I thought just doing some grid work might be cool. So, the whole purpose of doing these monoprints is to work on our own collage papers. I have an upcoming project that's going to be done in black and white. So that's why today we're working in black and white. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is start out with my Stabilo marker, Mar not marker, pencil. And everything will be listed that I can find on Amazon. Everything will be listed down below, whether it's on Amazon or not, but I will add the links to stuff if you want to purchase it through my affiliate links. It's no extra cost to you, but it helps support my channel and gives me a few pennies per sale. All right, so. So I've taped this down on my work mat, and I'm just going to... Start tracing lines. They don't need to be perfect. This is going to be a very organic, grungy, urban-y piece that we're working on. Well, that I'm currently working on. And you'll be seeing that in upcoming videos. Just... It's okay if we don't get them perfect. Actually, I can just come in and thicken those lines up. Because our line weight does not need to be the same across here. But the whole idea is I don't want to push too hard either because I don't, even though I have more of these I don't want to leave indents too much although that could make for some interesting marks okay so now we're just going to work our way across and trace our lines lines can be intimidating people they really can I don't care how long you've been doing art straight lines are intimidating now that that is done i'm going to use just a regular copy paper for this this i have in my sponges so i'm just going to use this to kind of dab it a little bit there we go i want it wet but not so wet that it beats even though it's a grungy one. All right, I feel like that. It's good. I 
don't feel it wet up here on this corner though. Just want to not too much. Okay. Now I'm gonna place it down. I, I I've already think I messed up. It ain't straight. And it's already printing. Okay. We're going to leave it like that. Smooth it out. I don't have a roller. But I could. Get me a spoon or something. Let's so. I think I ought to. Because you don't want to be too hard on the printer paper under it. And you don't have to like really push down. Just give it a little bit of elbow grease. All right, I think I'll take off this. And let's see what we've got on the underneath. Okay. Didn't print very dark, but still, we'll probably end up using that. What can we do to improve it? Well, I think we need to get it a bit wetter. Uh, line it up like so crooked again but okay and then this time I'm gonna do something a little different this time I'm gonna wet the back of it so that really has to reconstitute that stabila underneath there and this is all an experiment it's just a play day let's play with our art materials now, I want it to be grungy. I don't want these lines to be perfect, to be honest. All right, let's check. All right, we don't need it to be perfect. But you can see the circles, too, that was done. That's kind of interesting. I think I'm ready to try a different material or a combination of materials. This is my watercolor pencil. I'm not sure that it's the best for this. So we're going to thicken up these lines. And this is an experiment. It's new to me. I like doing different things. But I don't really have all the materials say somebody professional would have. These are more of the materials that I have on hand. I'm quite a bit lifted from there. And I'm new to using these Stabilos too. I know they're not waterproof. I know that because I tested them. They are reactive with water, which is exactly what we wanted. Well, we're trying different materials to see what we might be able to get from monoprint. From the research that I've done, the difference between monoprinting and monotype is monoprinting is done, it involves a series or similar works like, you know, the grid. I'm doing several of the grid. It's a series in a piece of work that I'm going to do. If I just sat here and drew something out and only did one print of it and it was one of a kind, I think, and it, it wasn't a pattern, that would be considered monotype, I believe. Do your own research, please. Don't take my word for it. But so that's, I will spray mine, lay it down. All right, I'm going to lay that there. Oh, yeah. Try to get some of these wrinkles out too. Okay, so 
I have raided my kitchen drawer and I found some pastry stuff. So, yep, this is my big old roll pan. I don't have a player. I would like to. If, this, if I really enjoy doing this, then I'll go out and buy the, the uh, supplies to properly do it. And the jelly, a jelly plate would be nice, but it seems to be doing okay for now. Definitely probably be a little bit more portable. All right. I can see that coming through a little bit. It's just not the strength that I want. I'm going to work with some acrylic. And I may add a little bit. I'm just using the Apple Barrel Black. But I'm going to get a little bit of this glaze use this as a glaze. Uh, they use this a lot in uh, acrylic pour. I'm not going to do that, you guys. I'm just going to use this as a glaze. I've actually bought this a few years ago and never, because I was going to try the acrylic pour, and I still probably might in the future, but um, and I've never used it, and so I did a little research to see, well, what can I use this for other than, and it was saying, basically, you can just use it as a glaze. That's what it's for. It's interior paint glaze. So I'm just getting my paint. And I'm going to do a little experimenting. I want to see how it acts with the... Uh, with the glaze let's get some glaze in there oh that's nice yeah I can see why that's a good yeah alright I think that's going to be and I'm just going to start painting on here mixing in some of that glaze We're trying all different techniques, and I think there's going to be a learning curve to this, y'all, so bear with me. We're going to get it all on there. I probably could have just squeezed it out on there and then put some glaze on there, too, but... Uh, we're doing it this way. We're doing it this way. That's another thing. People use their rollers to roll their paint on there. A little sponge roller or something. Whatever you've got on hand. I'm using what I've got on hand. And I don't think I want to go searching for old paint rollers at this point. I just, this is not something I feel like doing. I like, I like painting. I like painting strokes. I like it. Okay. And we're just going to try. And with it being a grungy kind of artwork, grungy, we want, I think I want some of those lines. I don't know. Is that too many lines? I think I just go over it a few times. Let it get tacky. All right, now, now I can draw something in it. What do I want to draw in it? Well, since I have my spoon here, I'm just going to draw some, I don't know what it is, some squigglies, 
some like ancient wall writing. It can be whatever I want it to be. What shall we try it with? I want to try it with a little bit more heavier paper than these. Just line it up. Drop it down. I have a feeling this is going to work better. It, it already feels better. I don't know. That makes sense, but <laughs> it feels pretty good. Okay, I want to go ahead and do, let's try this, this thing here. This might be a better tool for me because that Big old rolling pin is just, I think, too bulky. So, Let's see why this thing won't work well. All right. I uh, should have probably wore gloves, but I hate wearing gloves. I'll be honest with you. I like getting my fingers wet in paint. Even when I oil painted, I liked it. I liked playing in the paint. Okay, now let's remove that lid. Let's see what we got. I like this part. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, shoot. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is more like it. Okay, acrylic paint. Yes. Look at that. That looks grundy. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. But I made this stencil with um, hot glue gun. And I thought that would be kind of cool. I'm just wondering, do I paint it in? How do I want to do this? I want this side to print up. So I think I'm going to paint over this with my Floetrol and paint. I do think adding that Floetrol to it helped it, but I think it needs even more. Stay wet a little bit longer. So. I don't know what this is going to do, but we're going to, we're going to go with it. We've got that on there. I'm going to see how that's going to print. This time, I'm not going to wet my tracing paper. I kind of don't know if I want to use the tracing paper for it, but I like the thinness of it, so we're gonna give it another go. That's the only thing about acrylics is oof, it dries fast. I think they dry faster than watercolors. <laughs> I don't know. Probably because watercolors is more watery. But I just don't use acrylic paint near as enough as I should. Y'all, you know, I get almost everything through the mail. I'm an introvert. I don't go out much. Okay, that looks a little bit strange. Let's, let's just give it another quick wipe over to make sure it's wet. Oh. It's just not working the way I want it to work.
can lay that on top of there. I'm thinking coffee paper is better for this uh, one here. I don't think I like that tracing paper. But it was something to try. I'm actually going to get another piece of and we're just going to press down on it all at the same time. We are playing today. Okay, that's a lot better. Ooh, I like that. I can't see any of the shapes that I did, but I like that. It's got a lot of... A lot of nice inking in that one. I'm trying to get several prints out of this baby. Now there's the shapes. Yeah, oh, I like that. That's cool. All right. Now let's see what we got under here. Okay. It's like a bunch of blobs. Yeah. Um, no. I don't think I like that one. We've got some interesting stuff going on here. Um, I, these are just going to be tore up. And used in collage. Anywho. So. Yeah. I think I'm going to clean this off. And try a couple more of the subtractive ones. And I'm just going to do some more. Um, subtractive style. I really liked how that one worked out. With the hieroglyphic type. Funky scribbles. So I'm going to do some more of that. Do what works. Experiment. Because even something that you think doesn't work, you've learned something. So it's never a waste. What do I want to do? Let's do some... Okay, scribbles. I want to do one too that looks like a, a brick wall, maybe. Oh, this is good music to this. Do it some overlays. Okay. Way too into that. So, I'm going to do it on the side here. I thought I was. <laughs> I already messed up. So what? <sighs> Not just the mark making. Oh, y'all, that worked beautiful. Okay, yeah, I like that. Even the part that I messed up, it, it, yeah. The paper, the marker paper, not too bad. This is uh, the, Strat, the Stratmore marker paper. The other marker paper was the uh, artist marker pad by B Paper. I don't even know if they make it anymore. It's been such a long time since I uh, bought those for mixed media and stuff. Okay. Ooh, I could use this. I'm going to start doing more of that. Okay. I was going to do this. And then let's see. Seems like it would be better coming like that. Okay. Oh, that's nice. Okay. All right, I'm 
let's see. I'm going to peel it where I can see. Oh, that's so nice. That's what I'm talking about. The thing I like about this brush is it leaves lines too. Alright. I don't know. I'm just going to do some more scribbling in here. This time. I think I'm just going to go in one direction here. This is, <laughs> this dog brush is actually a really freaking cool tool. I like that, just like that. I need those lines in it. And I want to use copy paper. because I think it's going to be really nice to collage with this copy paper. I'm going to put it here. Since we're going for organic, I don't think it's going to matter in the end. Oh. Got some surprising, look at that, some surprising little marks in there. I love that, I love that, okay. I don't know how to do that. Other than just doing lines here. Because it doesn't need to be perfect. I'm just overthinking. I just need to make these, these marks. Because it needs to be grungy. It's a street. Grungy, very urban uh, project. I'm not going to tell you ahead of time. You will have to find out. I don't think that looks like a brick, but it looks like something. Okay, I don't like that. That's cool. I can just erase. But everything else, I think I like. Okay. Oh, look at that. I'm going to say yeah. I'm going to say yes. I like those marks. I got some darks. I got some lights. I think I'm going to do a few more. I'm trying to think of what else I want in this painting. Oh. Oh, yeah. Since it's going to be a street one, I'm pretty sure I want. I'm just adding in some more of this flow trial. I hope you see it here. Alright, so I thought I would do some buildings. Just sketch some bar buildings and all different shapes. Is that even working? Seems like my scraper's not working. Maybe I do have too much. Maybe I should use my spoon. Yeah, spoon. Just making kind of like buildings. I 
which are basically just rectangles. Of all kinds. thinking I might have to invest in a jelly plate. I think it's going to be good. Here comes the surprise, my friend. Okay. Well, it didn't really turn out what I was thinking. I think, honestly, on this one, I used too much paint but I needed some darker pieces anyway so we'll see oh I'm making a mess yeah that was a lot of paint um, and I can get some from the sides here I just think sometimes these brush marks in themselves look good I'm going to take my scraping spoon again, and we're going to try to do some squares again for buildings. I have to make my lines thicker, don't I? I'm just going to make these lines to kind of give the illusion of some buildings back in here. I don't know what I'm thinking on this one, but hey, maybe it's a building with those funky windows or something. I don't know. Let's try that. Well, I actually like that dark one. I, I, like I said, I needed some dark ones. You want to do like a variety of light, medium, and dark. See if they got more of this. Paper. Oh, baby. All right, I like that. That turned out pretty good. I don't know if you could call it urban, but I definitely think it's something we could work with. Actually, that one with a bunch of lines turned out really kind of cool. All right. Some of these old lines in here could be cool. I'm going to do one with circles. Do the time warp again. Yeah. Let's do 
that one with her eye. Ah. Okay, that's enough play. I didn't use any other stencils. I need to use some stencils. Okay. That one. You don't peel it like this. Oh, you know what? Those almost look like flowers. Oh, how awesome is that? Looks like black and white roses. It's kind of cool that you have to work fast because... It just comes out more organic, doesn't it? I don't use up all my paint. Now, I'm thinking if the subtractive method is more successful, that I'm going to try a stencil and try to take Oh, I could use a baby wipe, but I don't have them here with me. And put down a stencil. Let's do some stars. Let's do some stars. Let's do some circles. And I'm just playing here. Actually, let's even do something. I'm not sure it's going to print that far over, but okay. And I was thinking that I would just wipe it away. Dab it away. Alright, and maybe that print better but I have to work super ooh, super quick don't I? I don't know okay I don't even think those are gonna print down there but I want to try this little like I told you I used to do drafting so I have drafting stuff available now we remove the stencils. Uh, that almost looks like a popular logo, even though it's not. And I'm not affiliated. So just to let you know. But it's there. Okay. I'm going to try the back side of this. That didn't print earlier. Try it now. To be sticking. Come on, let's see what we got. I feel excited. Oh my gosh, it worked! It worked! It worked! All right, that's gonna be cool. Yeah, Ooh, that's cool. Little hockey uh, stick. Or whatever it's kind of cool all right let's do some more because I have a little bit of paint left and I think when I use it up that will be it get you some DIY collage papers I like this uh subtractive technique I want to call it putting paint down and taking it up I think that's gonna work pretty good in in the collage too bleep 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 okay 
But as far as the plate, the bag works good. I think it worked. The bag worked good. Okay, I'm using this piece that didn't really print earlier. I have to say, so far I like the bees paper the best. It just seemed to really stick to it, which is really made, I think, for uh, mixed media markers, smooth, a little bit thicker. I'd say it's almost twice as thick as the copy paper. Tracing paper, I was not, I was not thrilled with the printing part. I think the tracing pa paper may be better for other things. That one didn't print that great, but you know what? We need some light ones, and I'm okay with that. I kind of like this up in here, and this up in here. All right. Don't know. Do I have enough for one more? <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll do one more. What should we do? Let's do some more scribbles. And... Fun, 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 fun. And of course you can do this with colors, but which we will work on future projects for that. Okay, let's do some more hierographic like writing or just some funky, funky letters. Just some lines. I'm getting some lines in here. Those look like letters, numbers that just don't make any sense. But it has two sides to it. Um, this one has got a little bit of. I don't think it matters what side you use, but it could. I don't know. I like creating. If I've got the energy to do it, I'm going to do it. So, so my headache is returning. So, this being the one. Oh, that looks so good. I like that. I like that a lot. You know, you could totally do some writing and just, yeah, make you some mono prints. Um, okay, I'm just going to go through them and show you what I got. Okay. I like that. Lighter papers, I think I can, like, uh, spray some, uh, ink or watercolor paint over it and use that for, yeah, I actually kind of like the organic shapes in this one even though it's nothing what I want it to look like but that's the beauty of this project same thing here very very neat uh, it almost looks like a landscape to me it's, I start seeing it's like a cloud watching you start seeing shapes now these didn't turn out what I wanted them to turn out but again I'm going to need light areas as well, and definitely can paint over these when I use them. Those were the first ones. So the Stabila, I think, is more for the very end of your collage. It's not really meant to print with, even though it is water-soluble. Nice. I like this one a lot. It has some darks in there. Very grungy, urban, exactly what I was going for. I like that. This one's interesting. Even, it even got the mark that was on the stencil. <laughs> but I like it. I like it. Definitely. Be glazing over that with some color. Same thing with this one. Some interesting organic 
shapes. I love the brush marks in here. This is probably my favorite. It just reminds me of like a bouquet of roses, like those forever roses or something, you know, it just, oh, I have to do more of those in the future for sure. This is more of my urban-y one. And this, these are done on the good marker paper from the B Company. Because I use two different kinds of marker paper. The other marker paper from Stratmore was quite thin. Almost as thin as tracing paper. But this is a thicker, more for uh, mixed media. Anyway, back to this. Another urban-y feel to it. It turned out great. I love it. Especially I love this one. It just feels like it has some dimension to this down here. Can't wait to collage with this. Uh, another. I like these. I, like, I think I like all the ones that I did on the B paper. I think it just picked up the paint much better. The writing. Kind of like a graffiti style of writing. I don't know. You know. It looks awesome. More line work, more marks. So that's it, my friends, for the mono printing. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please, if you're new to this channel, subscribe if you enjoyed this content because I have lots of projects coming up that we're going to have fun with, collaging, using mixed media. Yeah. I hope to see you there. Thank you and have a wonderful day.